is known around the world that French people love cheese. But did you know that there are many tips and rules about how to build the perfect cheese board? Don't worry about that, I am here to help you out. Bonjour everyone and welcome to The Hungry Parisian. My name is Lola and I'm a French tour guide living in Paris. With this channel, I want to bring a little bit of France to you, so if you want to see more, make sure to like this video and turn on notifications so that you never miss any content from this channel. Like any French person, I love cheese, and if you've watched any of my videos, you probably really noticed that. But today, we're going to talk about the ultimate French course, the cheese platter, of course. So there is a little difference between a cheese platter or cheese board and a charcuterie board. I know that nowadays all of those terms are used, you know, to basically talk about the same thing, which is basically a board with cheese on it, but charcuterie in French is cured meat. So if you have only cheese on it, we're going to call it either a cheese platter or a cheese board, but not a charcuterie board, because charcuterie is this dried meat that I told you about. Another question that comes up quite often when I do my tours is when do French people eat the cheese? If you're at dinner, you're going to eat the cheese between your main dish and dessert. The second way that you can eat a cheese board is if you use it as your main course, basically. If, for example, you're having some friends over or if you go to a bar, I mean, when we used to go to bars, obviously. But if you do that and you don't want to, you know, do something very complicated or whatever, you can just make a small or big cheese board and this way everybody can enjoy it together, basically. The question now is what type of board are you going to use? Obviously you have a lot of different type of plate, but my advice is to stick to more natural material. What I mean by natural material is going to be either uh, wood, like this one, for example, or this one, but also you can have slates. I actually got this one from the ruins of an old French castle. It's a whole story. Obviously, if you don't have a plate like that, you can use, you know, a ceramic plate or a porcelain plate. My advice is to steer clear of anything made out of metal and especially made out of silver, because the problem is that silver kind of give a weird taste to the cheese, especially if it's a goat cheese. So if you absolutely want to use, you know, your beautiful silver tray, just put maybe, you know, some parchment paper or a little something underneath it that's going to make sure that the cheese is not in direct contact with the metal. Always steer clear of plastic. The reason for that is because plastic hold the smell a lot and let's be honest, some of those cheeses, they're pungent. Yeah, you're gonna smell them for a very long time if you use plastic. Obviously in terms of shapes you can do whatever you want, you have some nice round ones that are very good, you know, if you want to do some sharing. You have smaller rectangle ones. I uh, like all type of cheese boards to be honest. I actually did a little selection that I'm gonna put in the description bar below from Etsy and Amazon. So if you're looking for the perfect cheese board, you will have a nice place to uh, shop for it. So now let's talk about the different type of cheeses that you can use on your cheese board. Obviously, because I'm French, I'm going to use only French cheeses in this particular video. But if you want, you can find a lot of different cheeses from all around the world even if I personally think that French cheeses are the best, but that's maybe because I'm French. This way you are sure to have a very broad cheese platter with a lot of different tastes, and I think it's always a good thing. You do your own cheese plates. Another thing that I found quite nice is to take different shape of cheeses that allow, you know, for different heights, from different texture, and also sometimes for some cute little shapes. For example, this little cheese here is called a Neuchâtel and it's shaped just like a heart. And it's Valentine's Day right now. I'm doing this whole platter for my boyfriend and I on Valentine's Day. So I thought it might be nice and romantic to put this little cheese in. Now, let's get to work on the platter itself. So the first thing you want to do when you do a cheese platter is actually to take out your cheeses a little bit in advance. My advice is around one hour if you live, you know, in a country that doesn't have very strong temperatures. But if you live in a country that's quite warm, I would say take it out, you know, maybe 20 minutes before serving it. The reason for that is because you don't want your cheese, you know, to be like very cold and to be very dense. You want it to have freedom, you know, to run out a little bit. Once you choose the board that you're going to put your cheese on, my advice 
is to arrange the cheeses, of course, to look pretty, but also to make sure that it's going to be convenient to cut them afterwards. What I mean by that is that you don't want the cheeses that are hard to cut to be in the center where you're going to basically butcher them and in the same way, you know, completely cut everything on the side of it. That's why, for example, for hard cheeses, I would always put them on the side and for softer cheeses, I would put them more in the middle, for example. After that, the question comes of whether you should cut the cheese before or not. My advice is for some of the hard cheeses, I think it's good to cut a few pieces beforehand, you know, so that it invites the people that are going to eat the cheese platter to you know, take a little piece and nibs on it, but never cut too much of the cheese beforehand. The reason for that is if by any chance you don't finish the cheese, it can happen, it does happen from time to time, you can put the cheese back in its paper and it won't go bad. While if you cut too much of the cheese, your cheese can spoil a lot easier. And honestly, you've put so much effort in this beautiful cheese platter. We don't want it to go bad. And now the question comes of whether to put other things in your cheese platter or not. If you've come to France, maybe you've noticed that our cheese platter are usually very simple, you know, just the cheeses, maybe just a little bit of decoration, but not that much. That is especially true if you go to somebody's house for dinner. Once you arrive to the cheese course, you're usually going to have only cheese, maybe a little bit of salad on the side, but like nothing super uber fancy. It's because we like enjoying the cheese as is. But if you're doing the cheese board or your cheese platter as a main dish, you know, it has like your full meal, then go ahead, you know, go crazy. My advice is to try to go with things that are going to go well with your cheeses. That's why I like adding little different things. For example, I like putting some apples. Right now we are in February, as I was telling you, Valentine's Day is coming up. And in France, we don't have that many fruits that are in season. So that's why I decided to choose some apples, also some dried plums. That's mainly because I am lactose intolerant and at least this way my belly is not going to kill me at the end of this. And also always put a few jams with your uh, cheese because I think it's very nice to have this sweet and salty taste, you know, that kind of mingles together. And one of my favorite things to do is actually to take a little bit of honey and put it on goat cheese. So that's why I like putting also some on the side. Of course, if this is your main dish. It's also nice to have some little things to nibble on. So sometimes you can put some olives. Here I decided to put, you know, some nuts because once again, this is just what I like. In terms of bread, of course, if you can, you know, grab yourself some good fresh bread. Some people only swear by baguettes when they're eating cheese. I like taking some poilin bread. I think it's very good. I think it has this amazing taste that goes so well with the cheeses. And also it's made with sourdough. So once again, you know, this is gonna make it a little bit easier on my stomach after uh, the cheese platter. So now we have this perfect cheese board, but the question is how do you eat cheese properly like the French? Don't worry, I've got you. I'm gonna make another video where I will explain everything about how to properly cut the cheese and how to properly eat them so that, you know, French people don't take you for a heathen or something. All right, guys, so those are all my tips for cheese boards. If you use some of them and you do your own cheese board, make sure to tag me on Instagram because I would be so happy to see what you guys come up with. And if you have the time, maybe you can go check out some of my other videos. That would be absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for watching this video. Merci and au revoir!